Okay, so you got the president saying it could be the official end of Iran if, if, right. if, if things ratchet up. You've got a missile that landed in Iraq near the U.S. Embassy. You've got drone strikes in Saudi Arabia. You've got attacks on super tankers, which we don't know where they really came from. It may or right. may not have been Iran. And yet oil's at 63 and change? I think the market is basically saying, we've been here before. The Middle East is a mess. Are we really going to have a war with Iran? This is just more noise. I mean, I look at the situation and say, I think we're moving into a much more dangerous situation, principally because who's calling the shots or who's sitting at the hand of power. But I do think that the market for now is waiting to see a real physical supply disruption. Hadley, you live there full time in the Middle East. What's the mood like? Is there a sense there? that massive conflict is inevitable? Mm, it's kind of difficult because I don't know how you would feel about this, Halima, because you were just there as well. But what I'm sensing is an overabundance of caution on the part of the Gulf Arab states. Overabundance of caution because essentially what we know um, through back channels and through State Department officials who won't come out on the record and say it is that Iran is responsible for these yes. uh, blasts into these Saudi ships. We, we pretty much know that. And what's happening right now in the Gulf Arab countries, particularly between Saudi Arabia and the UAE, they don't want to go out alone and say, oh, Iran did this. They're being very cautious about this. That's a dangerous this. thing Correct. to say, by the way. Correct. And remember, they're heavily involved in Yemen at the moment, among yeah. other things, right? So they're overstretched. They don't want to be left holding the bag on any of this, right? So there's an overabundance of caution. They're essentially waiting for the United States and then this right. French team to come out. And so they can all together say, oh, and by the way, they were responsible. They're coming out many, many days later, as opposed to jumping on this immediately. Mm -hmm. And also remember what happens in Iraq, right? So I had the chance, obviously, to, to catch up with the Secretary of State a couple of weeks ago. And I followed on to that by asking some senior Iraqi officials you know, how dangerous is that situation right now? Um, and they essentially said to me, you know, I got one word for you, Benghazi. And who was the loudest voice tackling Hillary Clinton every day on Benghazi and all of those hearings? It was Mike Pompeo. So it's almost an overabundance of caution that they're making sure that they get all the non-essential U.S. personnel out, right? right? Because as you say, the Middle East yeah. is a mess. Nothing new there. Right. I mean, also, I think from the standpoint of many of these countries, they have to walk a thin line between saying Iran is a risk, but also saying we're a stable place for investment. I mean, you don't want to scare off the investor community too much. I mean, if you are Dubai, you don't want to be out there signaling, hey, UAE may be unsafe. Same thing with Saudi Arabia. So they have to walk a line between saying, like, Iran is a problem. United States, you need to help us here. And trying to say it's a safe place for investment. I mean, Exxon removed their foreign workers from yes. West Quarna One in Iraq. They the Iraqi government was very upset, saying Iraq is not unsafe for oil exactly. workers. Yet coloring all of this is A, a secretary of state in the United States who says they want to bring Iraqi export or Iranian exports to zero. Right. OK, Libya, which is near oh, civil war, if not in some form of a civil war. Venezuela, which may or may not be pumping any oil at all at this point. And if they do, it's maybe one no. ship a week. Yeah. And yet. Oil's at 63 and a half. Does that mean the United States simply has enough oil or Russia or Saudi Arabia that they can counter this? I think the market is very complacent. I mean, yes, the U.S. Too production. Complacent? I think it's too complacent. And again, I think we're almost in like the show me situation. I think the market, because you had those four tankers struck and they basically were not sunk. If a tanker had been sunk, if you had had the embassy hit if we would be in a much different situation. I think the market is looking through this. I think it's dangerous to look through this because, for example, they hit the east-west pipeline. That is the main way for Saudi to divert crude away from the Straits of Hormuz. If that were down for a significant period of time, I think the market would pay attention. And you have to remember, too, as well, because when you talk about the pipeline, we're talking about the Houthis, right? And, of course, obviously, they get Iranian backing. But they're not doing the bidding of Tehran on a daily basis. They are very much actors that act on it. These yeah. are mountain people. Yeah. I mean, come on. As someone from a mountain place in Tennessee, we have our own way of doing things. So you have to remember that they're not necessarily on Tehran's leash. Also, of course, with Iran, I mean, what I'm seeing so far is an abundance of caution on their part. Because if they had wanted to inflict serious casualty and damage on those ships, they could have blown them sky high. They didn't do that. They punched a hole in it. It was a tip for tat. Punch. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, I think that they're just saying, hey, listen, we've seen what you've done, and now we can do this too. But they know how bad it would be for them were this to escalate. There's there no sign, one's under any illusion. Is there any of that. sign, though, that this let's take the exports to zero program is actually working? I've been trying to track some of these yeah. ships. They turn off their AIRs, which is their, mm. effectively their GPS. I would imagine they're still selling oil to China they and India. They are still selling some oil. I mean, some. We don't have the expectation that they're going to get to zero. The question is, do they bottom out around 500,000 barrels a day of exports? That would be down 2 million from a year ago. And one of the things I do worry about in this market is this may be a careful you know, ratcheting up. 
But from the Iranian standpoint, we are trying to destroy their economy. And they believe it is aimed at regime change. And so the question is, is there an off-ramp? We keep saying we want the Iranians to call us, but what are we offering them at this point? What are we? You answer, you're a former CIA yeah, no, I don't see. I don't question. see the Iranians us. are a proud people, 90 million right. people. This is not some small country. They've right. got a long history, and I don't think they're going to let they do people, not they're let, the knee. let this happen. They can't. They do not want to take the knee. They do not want to submit. So the question I, mean, I have no proxies, no problems in Lebanon. Nobody's blown anything up in Lebanon. Hezbollah hasn't come out and made a big, big fuss about anything. I think that's very, very significant. The fact that the proxies haven't been blowing up. Right. <laughs> if they wanted this to get worse, that would be the first place right. this to and start. We do need to watch. We're about, you know, less than two months away from the next step in the Iranian nuclear program. They've done a small scale restart. The question is if the Europeans cannot offer them significant economic incentives, do they do something like, you know, start enriching at very high levels of uranium? Do they potentially withdraw from the non proliferation treaty? I actually think that's going to be a clear indication of where we're going. If they did that, what do we do? I mean, I think that's when we potentially have to have a more serious response. A military response? Again, is it something where... Because we're already doing pretty much all we can at we've their moved economy. All of our, we're moving ships to the region. The question is, do we see more cyber attacks in Iran? Things like that.